our meeting to order. Good to see everybody here today. Thank you for your interest in your county government. We really appreciate seeing everybody. Um, Asked uh, Mr. Mitchell if he'll do the invocation and uh, Mr. Jamis, he'll do the pledge to the flag if you'll all stand with us, please. Thanks, everybody, for coming. It's good to see you. Bow your head, please. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to come out and do, do the people's work here today. And thank you for the rain. Be with all the farmers. They start getting their crops in. And Lord, just be with us as we make decisions for the betterment of our county. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Pledge to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let me see your agenda. Yeah. Thank you. All right, the agenda is there. Is there any amendments or deletions that we need to do to it? Just, I don't think we have to do the right. remote for Lori. No, we don't have to do the remote for Lori. She's here. It's good to see her. Thank I'm glad she's back here with us and Thank everything. You. I would like to make one amendment to the agenda. Uh, we need to change the order. Uh, I think in, on y'all's, it's got the park, park and rec first. We need to do the fire apparatus first, the uh, memorandum of understanding, because we're going to lose our county attorney, I think, around 4 or 5 o'clock. And so uh, let's do it. Let's, if you don't mind, let's, and I'll entertain a motion to amend the agenda that way that we have it to uh, to do him in case he has to leave and uh, we have to go in closed session mr tatum you've got that right there somebody do a motion for me please that we change the order to fire apparatus first second second all in favor, six, five, say aye. 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 All right. All right, let's go into the fire apparatus and the uh, memorandum of understanding. The envelope that uh, you got uh, is that. And, uh, I know that you've looked through it and read it, and uh, so uh, any if we got any questions, do any of anybody have any questions for staff uh, before we got the small phone? Let me make sure that thing's off. Sorry about that. Uh, anybody got any questions or uh, anything for staff on this? Uh, these papers that we've got here or do you have any questions at all period mm -hmm. I, I, I have one in general we're uh, currently paying them ninety thousand dollars a year versus <clears throat> the volunteer units receive twenty six thousand per year Chris and I talked about this just really trying to understand the basis for paying one unit ninety thousand versus the other 26,000 uh, as it relates to, you know, if we're paying them more um, per year based on that agreement, then then you could consider part of that's going towards the fat fire apparatus. If, if everybody, if the other volunteers are receiving that for these other payments and it's all about equal, then, then you can really consider the fire apparatus on its own as a standalone decision. I think to look at that, you'd have to look compare the number of calls that the volunteers answer compared to the Rocky Mount Fire Department. And you start looking at the actual number of calls, uh, I don't think there's going to be any comparison to, uh, you know, I, I think it would more than justify the, the difference in, in the, the amount. 
We also need to keep in mind that when the Rocky Mount calls go out, they go out and somebody else has to come into the town to take care of their calls for them as well. So that's another another thing that's going on there to keep up with. And if I, if I could, Put this, again, make some um, clarification, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Um, for, for Mr. Quinn, the, the 90,000 um, that you mentioned, that, that, that's gonna fluctuate. Um, it's not a 90,000 set in stone. Um, again, it's, it's it, each quarter, it's 60%. Approximately, say the last quarter was 60% of the calls outside the town boundary. Mm -hmm. um, the previous quarter may be 55%. You know, it's gonna fluctuate. Um, the last couple of years, it just so happened to average out to be around 90,000. So the, the, the large portion of that 90,000 is really that percentage reimbursement for line of duty, insurance, fuel, uh, whatever percentage outs of calls outside the town boundary that the, the Rocky Mount Volunteer Fire Department is running, if that brings some further clarity. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anyone else? How about down that other way? Didn't they, did you see the, the memorandum here uh, from Mr. Whitlow in regards to the cost of the trucks? Anybody got any uh, comments or questions on that? It's the two page got memorandum at the top. There was some research done on what the surrounding areas and jurisdictions were doing uh, in regards to their fire apparatus. And as you can see there, uh, the summary that was that came up. Uh, and then you can see these these prices or these costs. Uh, they were uh, Mondays this past Monday. So when those prices were, they're very recent. I mean, they're you know they're within a week old. We got this. We got an extra one of these. I'm close. We have an extra one of these packets that were given out. Would you please? We got an extra one already. <clears throat> Thank you. Let's go back to the, uh, let's deal with the uh, request from the town in regards to the two fire trucks. They've already ordered them. Let's take care of that first, the fire trucks. What, uh, well, I'll open the floor up for discussion. Uh, I don't have that, uh, what they asked for, but they were asking for the, on to that. How do you feel about this? What do you want to do? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I think I made my uh, thoughts known with a previous proposal that I made uh, with the uh, town <coughs> back in the fall. And at the time, uh, there were a number of fellow supervisors that uh, agreed <coughs> with uh, the proposal didn't feel it was perfect but felt like it was a good compromise and then of course things change when a meeting comes around and some decide not to not to vote that way but I feel that 
the town citizens are county citizens just like the rest of us. And right now, their county tax dollars go to pay for a fire truck that goes to Glade Hill. They go to pay for a fire truck that goes to Boone's Mill. Their ta county tax dollars goes for a fire truck that's in Ferrum or Henry. But yet their county tax dollars doesn't pay anything toward a fire truck in the town of Rocky Mount. And for that, I think that's an oversight on this board's part, and I think that it should be corrected. Now, the uh, proposal, I know this board did approve a $50,000 a year for 20 years uh, offer to the town, and uh, the town uh, turned it down. And uh, basically, the proposal that I made later on was a compromise uh, split in the middle with what we had offered and what the town had asked for. Uh, I haven't changed my opinion on it, but... Uh, that's just my opinion, Mr. Chairman. I agree with what Mr. Tatum just said, and I'm not going to rehash all this again. I've done talked about it right. umpteen times. Uh, I am a little bit curious, uh, going back to that memorandum page, Mr. Chairman, Bedford, Henry, and Pitt County. I'm curious how the county's paying part of the costs of these trucks and all this, and how are the volunteers making up the difference, how they're getting money. Do you have any insight on that, Mr. Whitlow? Well, you did the research on that. Uh, from what I understand, M Mr. Carter, um, the, the balance uh, of those um, trucks are paid for through donations, volunteer donations, fundraisers, and so forth, is my understanding, and the research that our finance staff that we've done. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman, if if the board wants to go back and revisit this MOU and look into paying for capital expenses, I, I don't have a problem with that at all for the Rocky Mountain Fire Department. They're not a part of public safety, but at the end of the day, I see them all the time. I have kin for folk that serve on there. I know they do a good job. I'm not against them having what they need. But if that's what we're going to do, we have to go back and revisit this MOU because, as you saw in the reading, we have another department in the county who's up wanting their, their asset replaced. We can't afford two and three of these things a year. And if we're gonna, if we're gonna do that, we have to revisit the MOU, and, they, and even if they're not gonna be a part of public safety, they go into a rotation just like everyone else to keep, the playing, to keep it fair for everyone. Because if we do it for one, we have to do it for all of them. And um, that's where I'm at on it. And, and I'm a little confused in the reading. It said, um, that this was for a tanker truck, and I was under the impression the whole time that this was for a ladder truck. I, I think I think they they ordered two. One of them a tanker. One was a tanker. One was a tanker, and one was a ladder truck. Correct. Yes, sir. Is that what it was? Yeah, one is a. The tanker was the. Uh, tanker what, ordered the, two years ago. Come on up here. The tanker two. was ordered two years ago, prior to Mayor Holland. The um, the tanker was the one that was the one. 1.2. 1 1.165. The ladder was 1.165, and the ladder was 2.4. Don't quote me; I don't have it in front of me. I understand. Yeah, and the ladder was the most current, and and it was the town has we've signed a purchase order. These things take forever to manufacture. So the tanker that Nick references was actually it's been ordered for two years, and it's still not foreseen to come until the beginning of next year. Okay. So, if that clarifies it. Thank you. Thank you. But, Mr. Chairman, if we want to go back and revisit the MOU, I'm fine with that. Um, but, and I would, I would go back to something that uh, Supervisor Carter was saying a few weeks ago that, and, and Chris really does good in this reading here about how when, when they come to us and we need to purchase these things, we need to look at and have the option and look at other options and be able to, and, you know, Right now, we're just getting hit with this. This is what it is. This is what we got to do. And we, we need better options. I can't make good decisions for my constituents based off of here it is. This is what we got to have. You got to do it. And, you know, we'll go back and look at the MOU and go from there. But that's where I'm at on it. Well, if, if you look there in the uh, memorandum, and that's what you were talking about, the, uh, the price for the tanker. Uh, it's a whole lot different than what they've paid for theirs. Now, I do know that uh, pictures that uh, Mr. Whitlow has of the tankers, uh, the biggest thing that I saw, they were pierced trucks, some of them, and different. But they, uh, 
one was like 1,500 gallons, and then I think the one that they ordered was 2,500 gallons. So that makes it a little bit bigger for money. Just to clarify what Supervisor Mitchell was referring to, uh, what I was talking about is public safety coming in here to order a truck, and they've got, we got to get this Pierce Arrow. If we don't order it today, it's going up $500,000 tomorrow. I am not going to vote for that anymore, no. ever again. I want to see at least two, possibly three choices and have some time to talk about it. I'm not going to be forced and strong-armed into purchasing these trucks spur of the moment like that because it's getting totally out of hand. We're facing a historical tax season with a huge reassessment, and people are coming out of the woodwork complaining about these taxes. Well, when we make purchases like this, that's what drives those taxes. Correct. And I would also be curious as to what the town plans to do with their tax rate. I haven't heard anything on, I know they advertised for the full amount, but I haven't heard what, what, they're, what direction they're going on that. And I'll yield back, Mr. Chairman. Anyone else? Does that open up any other discussion? Well, I, uh, for what I was saying, I'm. I was going to make, say the same thing that uh, Mr. Carter said, the being strong-armed anymore, I wasn't going to vote for that because I think I don't think that's fair to the taxpayers. Uh, and then actually piggybacking off of uh, Mr. Mitchell as well, I said that I wasn't going to vote or go for anything because they weren't going to become, they didn't want to become part of the county uh, system. And I rethought that, and I'm not so sure that that's uh, a fair statement. That's their business, they're there in the town, but there's nothing that says that we can't put them on our rotation for the trucks, uh, period. I mean, we can do the same thing and just put a slot in there for the town of Rocky Mount on the rotation, and that's what uh, Mr. Mitchell was talking and a couple others have talked about. So we can just do that ourselves, and and then if it comes back up for another truck, well, it's not, not, not your time yet. You know, we do the rotation. I've been thinking about this ever since our meeting, and uh, I know you all said, and I, I made the statement at our last meeting that the school said something that I thought I'd never live to see today when they <laughs> said, uh, here, here you can have some money back, and, and uh, uh, we've got plenty. I just, <laughs> it still blows my mind that they said that, but with that being said, I'm glad and thankful that they did. But uh, for my part, what I've been thinking, they gave that uh, – was that 1.2 million back that was ours? They'd buy that one truck, buy it and give it to the town, and and be done with it. That's, um, you know, take that 1.2 million, buy the truck, and just be done with it. Miss Smith. I may, Mr. Chairman. Sure, go ahead. Um, so, you know, I'm a pretty pragmatic thinker. Um, I think, uh, for my part. Um, and it's what I said from the beginning, is that the MOU uh, needs to fundamentally be thoroughly reviewed um, and suggestions um, or uh, changes to the MOU be suggested uh, by Rocky Mount and by Franklin County and mutually agreed on. Uh, as I have continued to think through um, and seeing some of these numbers today and some of this uh, packet kind of reinforces my thinking, I think if we could come up with, within the uh, confines of the MOU, a way that Franklin County would um, provide a percentage of funding on an apparatus when it's due for funding, not necessarily considering it's in our rotation for purposes of just this conversation, but a percentage of funding an apparatus based on that year's call volume, or if you wanna look at it on a five-year trend, um, so that, like we do with the 90,000 versus the 26,000, um, the purpose of that was to acknowledge um, the, the service that's provided by Rocky Mount to um, Franklin County, gen you know, in general for services. So, um, you know, I, I definitely agree with what some of my colleagues have said with regard to um, you know, if, if we're going to participate in any funding at any level with Rocky Mount, um, that, you know, it would be stipulated for criteria as we do with our rotation schedule 
um, at what point in time, you know, would be inappropriate. It, it is the apparatus due for replacement, in other words. Um, but I would rather us deal with a percentage of a purchase price based on data than just blindly um, giving them a million dollars. If, if we were just to turn that 1.2 over, um, we're doing it in an arbitrary way, and we don't have a mechanism set up to say that's why we did it, that's how we did it, but we're gonna lay an expectation for the future, and it needs to be data-driven, and it needs to be policy-driven. And um, so I would rather us set up the apparatus um, percentage contribution through the MOU um, and let staff look at the mechanism of how that would work so that, it, you know, fundamentally and simplistically put, at the end of the day, Rocky Mount is being properly compensated. Um, you know, we're doing it with the other piece, the 90,000, but then on the apparatus side is when you bring in the capital piece, but it be more specifically articulated um, and, you know, requiring the MOU to be redone where it exempts capital in the MOU. Ledbetter, is he yeah. Mr. Ledbetter. Mr. Ledbetter, will you come up, please? I thought that was you that snuck yes, in sir. the back, back I snuck there. in the back door. He was back there. Uh, when y'all do the, uh, when the chiefs and y'all go around and do the uh, asset, the trucks, and look at them and do your replacement, is the town involved in that at all, or do y'all skip them? We don't, um, and it's just because the county's never funded their trucks. Uh, they could absolutely be done. We could do we could do it under the same criteria, and use the same algorithm. Everything we used on the when we did all the county trucks. County trucks. Uh, and and I'm just going to say this. I know everybody talks about putting them in the county rotation. <clears throat> My opinion, and the opinion of most of the chiefs, is that's not a good idea. Well, I think that we just took care of that. And that's just because they have so many trucks, it's going to, you're going you're gonna to have to go to buying two and three trucks a year if you if you do that. If not, we're going to get so outdated on trucks that mm -hmm. we're going we're gonna to cause a bigger issue. Uh, but as far as evaluating their trucks, yeah, we could absolutely do it. We haven't done it, but we could if, if y'all desired. It was just a question. I was just wondering if the, they did. But it's just like with this, with this tanker truck, uh, they're actually given, they're getting rid of two trucks and purchasing one. They're taking two trucks out of their stable and putting one back that better serves the town of Rocky Mount and Franklin County because they're getting rid of two smaller trucks that carries less water. They'll have more truck, more water on this one truck, three times the amount of water as either one of the other two. So it, they're, they're being pretty, pretty conservative about this. Because like I said, they actually gave up two trucks to just to replace one. And that one truck will benefit everybody in the county, talking about the tanker most especially. How the, the new truck, you know, we've talked about this before, about the bridges. We got, can it cross the bridges? Uh, it'll cross, uh, essentially it'll cross anything that, it won't cross them all. But we also have, I mean, my tanker and ferry won't cross them all. Cross them all either. Uh, you know, so they're not, it, it's going to carry 500 more gallons of water than what my truck does, what most of the trucks in the county carry. Okay. But it, it, in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's, not, it's nothing to be concerned about. They'll cross anything basically I can cross. Okay. Does that open up any questions for any, anything else? I, I have one question. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Ledbetter, right now I think the county's policy has been, I know it has been in the past as far as funding on trucks. They basically, the county will pay for what NFPA re requires on a truck and then anything that's considered accessories that individual departments currently pick that up. Is that still kind of but the way it's been done? Basically, um, again, all the chiefs got together, I'd say five-ish years ago and set kind of a standard spec mm -hmm. for a tanker and a standard spec for for a uh, engine. And then basically what we said is, is this is kind of the minimum. This is what everybody needs to have. And then if you get way over and above this, then 
that's where you kind of figure out, you know, who's going to pay for what. Uh, and that's kind of the way we've done it for the last six or eight years, the trucks have been bought. Um, and I'll use our engine for an example. Um, basically, it's, you know, it's a thousand gallon pump, a thousand gallon tank, 1500 gallon a minute pump. Um, and, and we set the county spec on, on <coughs> engines being custom cab trucks because they are safer, they carry more people, they have advantages that a commercial cab truck doesn't have. But um, so that was kind of the way we set that spec. And then when, and again, I'll use our truck for an example, we wanted to change the color on it, which you know means nothing to, to actually fight in the fire. So we came up with the money to do that. We didn't ask the county for that. We, we came up with that money. You know, that's kind of the way we've done it. Anything over and above, we let the individual agencies figure out how they wanted to pay for it. But we got Franklin County on all of them. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, I thought so. Yep. But, I, and I will say in all of this, all the chiefs have pretty much agreed that our feeling is the county should, should fund the truck for Rocky Mount. I mean, everybody's in agreement with that. You're not going to get a bunch of pushback from from all the other volunteer agencies because it's it you know they're a lifesaver to all of us. It, it's with their manpower and, and the response that they have is a lifesaver to the other departments. And if I can show up with three thousand gallons of water to help me, I'll take it every time. I don't think there's no argument from the board. Oh, I don't yet. think so. I just wanted to, I, mean, I just wanted y'all to. I don't think there's uh, no uh, disagreement with nothing yeah, there. I just wanted y'all to know that we we all back them that that this ought to be done. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. All. All right. I have one comment, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I know, understand we're getting a new director of public safety has been hired, going to start April the 8th, uh, not necessarily involved in this fire truck, but I think he should have some skin in the game when constructing this memorandum of agreement moving forward. Right. I agree. I think so. So, uh, I agree with you. Not, I've seen everybody shaking their head on that. I think so. We don't have to, well, we can't make a decision today because we need to go back into the executive. Uh, you know, but we can, uh, that's what we're here for is to talk about. It's, uh, I think Mr. Ledbetter put some light on that. These, these trucks here, Sure, there's a lot of difference if y'all noticed in this memorandum, the difference in the prices, big difference. And these these prices were just gotten within the last week, Mr. Mitchell. And and on that, Mr. Chairman, I believe it should um that should be something going forward for all departments, not just. And and when I, and I, when I discuss these things, I'm not saying Rocky Mountain. I'm not picking on any certain one. We need to be a level playing field for everyone. So how we're going to fund this one needs to be how we're going to fund that one and so on and so forth. And I get what he's saying about it not being in the rotation, but at the end of the day, there has to be a strategic, and kind of what Lori was saying, something strategic as to how we go about it. It can't just be a make it happen. Make it happen. Well, you know, we discussed this two or three meetings ago, uh, if you recall, uh, doing a basic truck. And if they wanted whistles and bells, they had to pay for it. Remember that? discussion mr chairman uh, that's kind of what in the past what we've been what doing. the county did it basically took whatever the nfpa standard was for that truck and that's what the county i know that goes back to when rick huff was here um uh, he and chris slim i know you remember mm -hmm. Mr. Slim. that was one thing that they did and then that was back in that was in the early 2000s so it goes back a while but back i don't know you know i i think that designing the standard truck um, you know nfpa puts out a national standard well that national standard might be fine for iowa or indiana where it's flat but do they take into consideration our heels so I, I want to make sure that whatever the standard we have that our fire association our chiefs have input because they know they know what they need and it you know i think uh, nfpa can put out a a standard, but I think our chiefs and our, our fire association uh, need to have input as well as far as what what they need because they know. 
And then another thing that was brought to uh, to my attention, Smith and I, we were invited down to Burnt Chimney and uh, got a pretty good insight. One of the things that was brought out down there, uh, especially with the turnout gear and the equipment, uh, here in the county, it's not beat up as bad and not used as much as it would be like in Roanoke right. or Norfolk or Richmond or New York City. It's, uh, you know, where they're constantly, constantly going, you know, and it may be there. So uh, some of those standards, even though they got three or seven years old, they've not been used nowhere near like it would have been if it had come from one of the cities and everything. That's so that that all that all needs to be kept, I think, in mind too. But yeah, I agree with you when you're talking about the new chief, Ms. Smith. Um, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to ask Mr. Whitlow, um, just for my uh, refreshing of the issue, in 2020, which was when this MOU was executed, what was the rationale behind exempting uh, capital? Ms. Smith, I can't recall the specific rationale of exempting capital. I think it was just understood between the town and the county at that time, between the staff and the council and the board, that this was really operational expenses and non-capital. Um, as Rocky Mount Volunteer Fire Department has had a storied, you know, independent history of the county not falling under public safety, um, and then they've done, you know, an excellent job, I guess, through the years. Uh, funding their their building um, that that they they're in all of their apparatus and so forth, but I can't specifically say that you know there was a long discussion of other than the fact that it was understood clearly that it would be non capital. Okay, thank you. Does that open up any more questions or anything? All right. Well, now as far as the uh, memorandum of agreement. Uh, we can start we can start going through that right now or or you can take these home with you this little packet that we've got and uh, make your notes on these and then we can come back and either rewrite this or restructure it in a meeting at uh, in another meeting in another workshop and uh, I think I think we need to maybe uh, get staff to go through here and uh, but the numbers, I think, are, especially these call numbers, he just did those. Uh, this just came out of the CAD system. But, uh, Mr. Chairman. I think the way that it was written, that it's, uh, it covers everything. It does uh, take care of uh, the needs. Mr. Twilight. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, in terms of uh, and our county attorneys here, um, and I think, Mr. Gwynn, you've probably had a chance to take a look at the MOU and so forth. And uh, I would just, you know, lend the floor to maybe our, our county attorney as to any modifications to, to an MOU. Mr. Mr. Gwynn, are you comfortable talking in here or you want to, do we well, need to go in closed session? With what I'm getting ready to tell you, I am. Okay. Which is this. The, the memorandum of agreement was originally a product of negotiation. And with all due respect, you're not going to be able to negotiate much if we're going to do it out here in public. That's right. Right. <laughs> so, That's right. So perhaps uh, a we closed need. meeting to discuss exactly the terms that you're talking about would be uh, appropriate, uh, and maybe next meeting or whatever. But when you do decide to do it, uh, you probably need to. Uh, is it A29? I think it, that uh, talks about the expenditure of public funds and. What's not on it? giving away your negotiating position. I think that would be a uh, more prudent course. A twenty nine twenty two. Well I got I got a question that uh, but I think we need to go into closed session on that to talk about that. So uh Mr. Tatum will you make a motion? Sure. All right, Mr. Chairman, the Franklin County Board of Supervisors will motion to enter into a closed meeting in accordance with 2.2-3711A7 consultation with legal counsel or briefings by staff about litigation or other specific matters requiring legal advice and A29 discussion of the terms of a public contract of the Code of Virginia as amended. Need a second? Second. 
Madam Clerk, will you do a roll call, please? Yes. Supervisor Mitchell? Yes. Supervisor Carter? Yes. Supervisor Smith? Yes. Supervisor Quinn? Yes. Supervisor Tatum? Yes. Supervisor Jamison? Yes. Chairman Thompson? Yes. Go back there. Yes, so uh, it's available. It's available back. Yes, sir. Okay. The AC. Private only yes, public business matters lawfully exempted from the meeting requirements under the Virginia Freedom of Information Act were heard, discussed, or considered in the closed session to which this certification applies and only such business matters as were identified in the motion by which this closed session was convened were heard, discussed, or considered in the meeting to which this certification applies. I need a second. Second. Madam Clerk, we do a roll call vote on that, please. Supervisor Carter? Yes. Supervisor Tatum? Yes. Supervisor Quinn? Yes. Supervisor Jamison? Yes. Supervisor Mitchell? Yes. Supervisor Smith? Yes. Chairman Thompson? Yes. Okay, folks, the Franklin County Board of Supervisors just authorized staff to start into no negotiations with a new memorandum of understanding uh, for our contributions to purchase a fire apparatus for the Rocky Mount Volunteer Fire Department. All right. Next order of business. Tourism and Ag Fair. Kevin, you and Paul are on the seat now. Have you got a, uh, where's my paper at? See you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. got a statement sir oh uh, absolutely we um we actually have a presentation that will kind of help walk us through uh, some of the questions that were posed in the worksheet that we sent um with the board last week um so if it's okay go ahead with the yes, presentation sir. if there's any questions as we go through Me it uh, it will definitely be an interactive presentation so so kind of looking at uh, what the presentation is going to go over um we're going to look at some of the completed and scheduled improvements uh, for the fairgrounds uh, we're going to discuss uh, the responsibilities associated with the fair and the fair committee. Uh, we will look for some interaction and some insight on a mission statement and purpose of the fair for goals and key performance indicators for the fair. We'll look at possible future funding models for the fair and then next steps and future planning, which will be that three, five and 10 year uh, planning for the fair. So as uh, we talked about a couple of weeks ago with some of the remaining funds left over in the Ag Fair budget, um, I was able to get with some folks from the Agricultural Development Board. We looked at some of the needs that were uh, kind of pressing uh, on our existing facility and we marked off uh, two different items that we could get done uh, fairly efficiently and in a quick turnaround. Uh, one of those was uh, removing uh, a couple of trees behind the large shelter, which would allow uh, trucks and trailers to more easily turn around uh, with livestock and with other options. Uh, you'll see there the trees that we're, uh, they're actually already cut down. This has been completed. Can I ask you a question? This Absolutely. gravel road, is this the gravel road right behind the building that's already there? Correct. Yes. And so the, the trees will be removed. And then with uh, some remaining funds, we're going to look to add some gravel back there. Uh, to make it a little bit easier. But that particular uh, tree cutting has already been completed. Um, we're happy to say we're well on our way for that portion. Uh, the other portion that we heard uh, was the need for water, additional water access there at the large shelter. And so I've got a couple of photos here. Uh, this uh, project is uh, looking to be completed here fairly soon. Uh, so this is looking at the left side of the large shelter. Um, the, the nearest uh, red spigot will be a new spigot that will be installed. Uh, the, the red spigot uh, on the back side there is an existing spigot. When you look down the opposite side, uh, we're going to be adding two new spigots down that right side. Mostly that will be for the midway uh, so that they won't be having to utilize uh, the water access on the far side of the shelter. 
Inside of the shelter, the two in the back are existing water accesses, but we'll be adding a third inside. This will aid in livestock shows and feeding of livestock uh, during the fair. And then this is kind of the wider view and there's an existing water access uh, there on the right side. So there'll be four accesses for water inside the large shelter. There will be two accesses outside on the left and two accesses outside on the right um, for water accesses. And those improvements are scheduled to be completed uh, here in the near future. So we're very excited about that. So kind of looking at the philosophical questions uh, that we've kind of posed to the board, um, uh, our assistant uh, county administrator, uh, Ms. Rosser, kind of had this idea of, uh, you know, who's driving this tractor? You know, who's responsible for the ultimate vision, planning, and outcome of the Franklin County Agricultural Fair? And this is where the interactive portion of the, the presentation will be, is where does this board see the ultimate responsibility of the fair? Um, who, who's, who's driving the tractor, so to speak? And I would pose that question to the board for, for any input that you have, because it will be pertinent to the, the rest of the questions that we'll have. Well, for my, my part, uh, I think that comes under your purview. Well, for my part there, uh, that's anybody else? Mr. Carter. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Kevin. For, for me, I think as long as there's county tax dollars involved, needs to be some county staff involved, but I would like for the Ag Committee to, to play a bigger role in helping you or assisting you or however you want to utilize them moving forward. So that would be the, the Ag Development Board. So, Anyone else got any comment or thing? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I yes. had, I had uh, given Kevin some comments last night via email, um, but I do see, you know, you, Kevin, uh, with Brandy, um, you know, kind of partnering in a leadership capacity. Um, your fair committee, I think, is integral to keep all the pressure off of you, um, which has been a one-man show um, to date. And um, I have suggested, uh, for purposes of my colleagues, um, that um, we perhaps have a couple members on that committee from the Ag Board, uh, potentially a couple of supervisors, um, two citizens at large, um, make, you know, no more than about a group of about 10 people or so that's manageable, but um, just being very selective so that this could be a working group versus just a group sitting around and hearing what staff's doing. I mean, I think you need workers um, that are, you all are going to be able to sit around, define scope, define, you know, master planning um, this event moving forward and those types of things. Well, I, what I said a while ago, I, I, I agree with the board. I think Mr. Tosh needs to be the one in charge of that county county staff from the county that the board and his advisory board his helpers we had nothing but that but I think it needs to stay in the county uh, we don't need to turn it over to nobody because you're the one that has to come back to present to the board from where the the dollars coming from the taxpayers so I think everybody's Mr. Carter everybody's shaking their head there that if you want to if you want to do a board that's fine one hurt to have a couple members off the uh, this board on there just so we can know what's going on to come back to the board to keep everybody apprised of what it is but yeah I think we're all saying the same thing perfect and that kind of goes along with uh, the second the portion here that you know, there was an existing Ag Fair committee that has went through different iterations over the years from its original inception of more than 25 or 30 members uh, in 2014 to uh, we had our most recent uh, meeting on last week and we had uh, five individuals that were there. Uh, so we, we saw that kind of dwindle down. Um, I guess the, the question would be, is there, do we see a need for this, what has been known as the Agricultural Fair Committee? Is that still needed? Is it an advisory group? Is it a governing group to the fair? What are the responsibilities? I guess moving forward, what does this board want to see um, from, a, from a sense of an agricultural fair committee? Any comment? From what the meetings we've had with Farm Bureau and, and um, comments I've heard is people want to see it going toward more of a livestock, more of a farm-based show. And I think in order to do that, we have to move toward having a facility 
set up for showing livestock, whether it's cattle, whether it's horse shows, whatever it is. And I think all of this conversation we're having is just to go around to the fact that we have to have a place designated for livestock. Setting up panels there where Kevin's showing, that's great because I know they need the water, but setting up panels to bring in a sheep and a pig and a, and a cow is one thing, but people want to see ropings and cuttings and horse shows and barrel racing and stuff. And that I think that's the direction the county needs to be going is a facility set up for that. And that would solve all these problems. Mr. Tosh, can you go back uh, three or four slides to where the uh, where you're showing the water in the building. Keep going. <coughs> Keep going. The other side. That side. Right there. All right. You wouldn't have to cut, but just three or four trees right there. We met with uh, some of the uh, ag people. Kevin and I did. You wouldn't have to cut with three or four trees right there. And you could build another building or add on to this building the exact same size. And the, uh, with the Ag Committee, they said that they could get the panels and they really wanted to use the panels, if I understand correct. They wanted to use the panels so that they could uh, configure the building as it was needed. The back side of the existing building has gravel in it so that they can do the livestock. <clears throat> now, the, what, what you were just talking, we'll talk about that with if you wanted to have like a, uh, a rodeo. Uh, I don't think there's nobody here. Uh, there was a committee of us that went to Patrick County. I went down there on that. They've actually got a field in the back and they did exactly what you were talking about. Uh, when their, their fair was in there uh, they had a rodeo. I'm not going to say they had it every night, but they had it about every night they had the fair. They had some kind of an event, whether it was roping, uh, bull riding, uh, and things of that nature. The one thing that I can tell you that, uh, and, but it can be done. I'm not saying nothing can't be done. Uh, the liability insurance, you don't have to get waiver signed. And things like that, but all that can be done. All that can be done, and uh, I think I think that's uh, you got the tractor pull. You got the tractor pull down there. I think the radio aspect of it. I know that, especially in this county, would draw a pile of people. Well, and that could be used for more than just the ag fair. I remember when they used to have the horse show down there in Sontag, back when I was a little kid, and that was a big deal. And I think you could get back to a lot of that, and because uh, there's people that leave Franklin County, go down to the saddle club and patrick down there uh, patrick henry saddle club they go all over the place to go to that stuff and we could have it here and i think when people talk about the ag fair they want to see it more focused on livestock and things of that sort and i, I think that that is the answer to our question is moving in that direction mr chairman yes sir uh, i agree 100 percent with what mr mitchell I like said it. i think that uh Prime example, just go down to Gretna to the Old Dominion Ag Center whenever they have their events. You can see what a drawing it has for not just that community, but from camp people. I met people down there from Campbell County, Albemarle County, of course, Franklin County. You know, it's thousands, you know, 15, 20,000 people there. And uh, I, I don't know that we are uh, ready to build a, a building facility, but all that can be done outdoors. You don't have to cover it. And I think, you know, I, I love the idea. I think that we need to uh, work with Paul and his staff and come up with a good location to, to put that in and and start making plans with it. Of course, you got to take in consideration seating and, and lighting and all that has to come into play, but uh, I love the idea. There's the, a facility uh, in Buckingham that, that I'm going to call and I'm going to set it up okay. and we're going to ride down and look at it. We, we ain't got to go that far. Not not this coming Saturday, because this coming Saturday, they're going to be in Dublin. But Saturday next, they're going to be down on Brooks Mill Road okay. at Dale Simmons' farm. It's going to be, and you're going to see cars there from uh, North Carolina, Tennessee, and everywhere. They're having a huge roping, pole bending, and, and barrel racing. And we ain't got to go, we ain't got to go out of the county. Last Saturday, it was in Bedford County down at Broken Bow Arena. And 
we it, it, it's all over the place and it, it it's already it's already there uh and as far as we got the perfect area already all we got to do is drain that pond <laughs> drain that pond and you got the perfect area right there and you got seeding that goes right down to it that's, that's <laughs> I know a lot of people don't want to see that pond drain, but I've been worried about that pond. But anyway, that you got that there. Any more? That, I'm sorry, Kevin. No, you're fine. So back to the Agricultural Fair Committee. Um, <laughs> what is there any direction you would like staff to take moving forward? I, th I think the Ag Committee, for me, would be more an advisory committee than anything. Yeah. I think as far as the governing goes, I think that's what you and, and staff is for and, and this board, but I think uh, the Ag Fair Committee is more of an advisory, and that's just me. I agree. So moving forward, with that in mind, um, with the individuals that were at the Ag Fair Committee and, and speaking with the Agricultural Development Board, um, one of the, the big questions that they do have for this board is, you know, what is the, the mission statement? What is the purpose of the Franklin County Agricultural Fair? Because that really will help guide our decisions that we make. It will help put, you know, a, a fence around it, so to speak, that we can move in a certain direction that is based on what this board wants to see the Agricultural Fair to be. And um, an example of that, uh, you know, Antique Farm Days happens there at the fairgrounds. Um, but with their mission statement, you know, you can read it there, but pretty much it's to preserve the, the farm machinery, the equipment, and to educate people on the equipment. So everything that they do is directly involved and directly goes back to the farm equipment and implementation. Uh, so with that thought in mind, what would you say as a board, and it could be seven different answers, but, you know, what is a, a mission statement? What is the purpose that you would like to see that the agricultural fair accomplishes each year as kind of a an overarching uh, mission statement yeah. uh, speaking for me i think I, it needs to be uh, a time that we celebrate our farming heritage here in franklin county both techniques of the past and present and future because farming is uh, i mean it, it, it's a lot of our history but it's also a lot of current, and it had better be our future, or there's going to be a lot of hungry people. So I, I like for it to, you know, let's look at the past, let's celebrate the past, let's identify the future, I mean the present, and let's also look forward. So I think it, that that could come into play. Mm -hmm. uh, that's for me. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I would like to piggyback on Mr. Tatum. Um, I think the fair, you know, I, I know that it's somewhat of a signature event, but just since I've been on the board, you know, when we had trouble with the, you know, getting um, the rides and all and so forth, I, I would like to see this be a permanent signature event of Franklin County that we commit to and we properly fund and resource it. We master plan it so that we can grow with expectations uh, along with appropriate resources along the way. But I think that if we establish this as a signature event to celebrate our rural heritage and our farming, our farmers and farming and everything that goes with that, I think that if we do that, we'll have an opportunity to bring other uh, partners um, into this in participating in terms of you know potentially some nonprofit organizations, churches, et cetera, that we could really just kind of uh, broaden that umbrella, if you will, um, to broaden the scope of the fair to meet some of the things, Kevin, that I know that you've heard from this board just anecdotally over time. Um, but I think that we do it and, and we're trying to get it right, but I want to see us be more deliberate about getting it right. And if we need a new building, if we need a new location, if we need to invest some capital monies in infrastructure, I would like to see this board tackle that decision so that we can put meaning behind this fair every year and that the citizens, and especially our region, knows that this is gonna be a really special thing that Franklin County does every year and that we do it extraordinarily well um, and it's got something for everyone. I know I generally say my comments to the end, but I, while, while it's here, 
because I agree with what both my colleagues have said, but I would like to see in that mission statement and also in the fair, uh, I like the animals and all of that, but I would like to see it incorporated. You know, we got two canneries and it is being used to preserve food that is being grown on these farms. And I like to see it. I know the animals are important, and, and, and they're a, hard, a huge part of it. There's probably been more cows in the county than there are people. I have no doubt about that. But that, that, but we need to incorporate the preserving of the food and the canning and, and, and show our real culture, uh, the old ways. But it's still, I mean, you try to go during canning season and try to buy some jars and lids, yeah. And they're hard to come by and, and incorporate all of that in our mission statement there. I'm sorry for butting the head. Mr. Carter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. One thing I would like to see included in the mission statement is uh, the FFA to involve the youth of the county because that's the foundation of future farmers. And I think that's, that's real important. And I agree with what Tim and the others said. It would be to showcase the agriculture in Franklin County historically and current. Now, how you want to hammer all that out, Kevin, I don't know. You're the wordsmith. <laughs> Anyone else? Gentlemen, does that answer your question? It does, and it leads us kind of into the next, and you kind of already hit on this. So looking at the idea of promoting our agricultural heritage, both past, present, and future, and the various aspects of it, um, and really you've already answered this question. If it's okay, I'll go to the next slide that – these were some of the ideas in, future, in past board meetings I had heard. Um, so obviously at the top of the list there, promotion of agriculture being a primary goal of the fair, education and awareness of you know, past and present and future opportunities in agriculture, community engagement with our local churches and our local nonprofits, youth development um, through the showing of livestock and participation, whether it be FFA, uh, the 4-H opportunities like that. Um, obviously, being a signature event, the entertainment and quality of life aspect, and then the economic boost uh, to our small businesses uh, and local producers. So if, if it's okay with this board, I, I feel like that kind of wrapped up everything that you guys just said, that these um, we could informally adopt these as kind of the goals of the fair, if that is the, the pleasure of this board. I think it kind of encapsulated what you had, uh, just went through. Just, just as a follow-up, a long-term goal, a larger goal, a uh, permanent venue, a bigger permanent venue for, for, for livestock, I think that's, that's going to have to happen down the road. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, Kevin, one of the things I forgot to touch on, you know, when I look at some of the events that goes on in Roanoke, as an example, there are entities in our region, like Carillion, um, I mean, Virginia Tech, et cetera. You know, I think that we could do some underwriting of this fair, you know, getting some of these larger entities to underwrite the fair um, in, you know, and there would be some type of partnership agreement where, you know, they would get marketing, advertising um, in lieu of, you know, their support on an annual basis, get them on an MOU, uh, something like that, but where they would have a financial contribution um, to Franklin County, and I think that we could achieve that. I, I would be optimistic that we could do that because even if you think about, you know, like board I serve on, Florida, Florida County, um, you know, we can do something that they can't do, right? So it makes sense that we collaborate and that we try to take what we have, the assets we have here, bring them in as part of it, have them be you know, contributing party and, and the money, you know, uh, we, we might be able to resource more things with our fair if we could establish these types of sponsorships or partners, if you will. Uh, but that, and I understand that takes an effort all within itself, but, uh, you know, sponsorships, that kind of thing. But I think, you know, part of the fair, the entry could be, you know, the Carillion, you know, uh, just some namesake of you know parts of the fair, um, so that would, that's just a suggestion to try to grow our revenue sources. <coughs> Absolutely. <coughs> so we'll move forward with that. Um, 
Just a couple of, of opportunities we had discussed, as you said, future funding models, um, you know, ways that we can continue to utilize the funds that the board has graciously given us each year. Uh, with this year after the uh, improvements to the fairgrounds, looks like there will be around $30,000 left in that account. You know, in talking with um, county administration, there may be opportunities to, to roll that over uh, in future years, whether it be for operational to do some of these things that we're looking to do, or whether it be to roll it over into a, a capital fund that can fund some of these capital projects that's related to the fair and the fairgrounds. Uh, so those are some things to be kind of thinking of as you continue your budget discussions that, as um, Ms. Smith said, and uh, as Mr. Mitchell said, kind of being deliberate with what we do and uh, having that end goal uh, in mind. So that's just something to think of as you, you continue to move forward that you know, the 75,000 that you put in each year over the past two years, there's been money left in that account that we could then repurpose um, with a, a specific goal for the fair. So just keep that uh, in mind. So kind of next steps moving forward, uh, you know, obviously our fair will be quickly approaching on August the 14th through the 17th of this year. Uh, we're looking to complete those uh, improvements that are included in this year's budget, uh, which is the clearing of the trees and creating of that turnaround and inclusion of the additional water access. Um, if there are any other uh, capital improvement projects that this board uh, sees fit that we can get done, uh, whether it be with the remaining funds or uh, moving into the next budget cycle, keeping in mind that the new fiscal year starts in July and the August, or fair will be in August, so there will be a quick turnaround there, um, but whatever the pleasure of the board is. Um, but also taking the feedback back today and crafting a mission statement, utilizing the goals that we talked about um, and the structure that we talked about. So. The, the input of the board has very much been appreciated. Uh, but in talking with uh, Mr. Whitlow and county staff, we believe it would be in the best interest of this board and for the agriculture fair to come back in September. So the fair will be fresh in our mind. It will be just happened and hold a work session in September, which would look towards that future planning, that three, five, 10 year planning, as well as capital planning for the following years, FY 25, 26. Uh, budget to kind of lay that framework and that master plan down for the fair. Uh, we think it would give us a full 11 months to get uh, some of the larger capital projects that you may want to undertake uh, completed, uh, but we believe that that would be the, the best course of action moving forward is implementing the thoughts from today into this year's fair as much as possible, uh, but then coming back in September to really get that three, five, ten year plan nailed down. I think, I think that's uh, important. I see everybody shaking their head, yes. I do know, Kevin, that we talked about earlier in our last meeting. I think it's important that this year, if we got, if we got some money left, and if not, we'll, we'll have to discuss maybe some appropriations. But I think uh, working out there in the front, like I did, and several of these other members, it was a lot of discussion down that the road. We need to get some benches in for handicap. Those folks were coming in there and, you know, walk so far and then, then they were coming in and out and we need to get that entrance and exit worked on so they're not coming in and out of the same uh, road all the time. That, and for all of you that were there that worked, I mean, everybody's shaking their head. That was, that was the biggest complaint or suggestion, ever how you want to put it, the lighting, uh, the lighting and the uh, benches for handicap. That's important. And then, Paul, how, how big is that park? How, how much land is there? Uh, that's a good question. I couldn't tell you right off the top of my head how many acres it is. Um, it's a whole lot of it's undeveloped, though. It's um, lots in trees. Actually, that's, uh, in, it's, that's in trees, and then we got the parking across the road. That's right. There's that area across the road, um, and pretty much the, the the grassy area is areas that can be developed. There's a concert, the the wooded area around the perimeter of the park um, is in a conservation easement. But everything that's pretty much grass is can be is could be developed readily easily. Okay. Well, what about the trees in between where the where you come into where the ag fair is, and then there's a swag of trees, and you have the baseball fields and stuff. Those are also in it, yeah. The only trees that, to, to be clear, the, the, uh, there's some trees that, that back access road, like behind the pavilion, those those trees, like where Antique Farm, <clears throat> farm Base has like their um, different shops, that kind of thing, those trees could be removed. But um, those trees between 
the, the, right next to the baseball field. Those are that. It's a little peninsula uh, that's in the conservation easement. Yeah, I have, a, I have a map of that if anybody would care to see it. Not on me, but I could provide it if, if needed. Yes. Uh, just two quick things, Kevin. So one, minutia, but you have the new hydrants, and it would seem good to have some big pylons outside of those so they didn't don't get hit by a vehicle. <laughs> and then uh, the second thing was, as the fair gets bigger, and I think back to last year where you had the tent, um, it's going to become more attractive to vendors. And the tent configuration wasn't really attractive to vendors because it was way off on the side and, and nobody knew what was going on or who's in there. And, and I think if you had kind of forced the people to go through the tent either before they paid or after they paid and before they got into the fair, I think it could become really attractive to more vendors, larger scale vendors, and that could be another revenue source for you. Yeah, agreed. Definitely we've have discussed that and have taken that into consideration. Mm -hmm. After you said that, Mr. Quinn, when we went down there to Patrick County, you had to get your tickets right there as you go in. And before you could even go through the fair, you had to go through a building like the tent that you were talking about yeah. where they had all of yeah. the uh, uh, vegetables and flowers. And That'd be perfect. You had you yeah. had to go through yeah, there. Exactly. You couldn't get in without yeah. going through that. And that was at the uh, Patrick County Fair and mm -hmm. Store. That's, yeah. all I have. If there's any other questions or any other input that you would like, especially for this year's fair as we are already well in the throes of, of planning it. Is, is it beyond the realm of possibility that we can get this all set up so that it's the same time every year? I think it is, it is 100% possible. <coughs> I think um, that's important. And, and we had, as staff have, have also talked about uh, following <coughs> this year's fair, if it would behoove of us to, to put it out to RFP to see if we can get multiple respondents, you know, with a specific date in mind, um, maybe see what options are out there or to see if we are limited to the, the current options that we have. But um, that is definitely a short term goal of mine is to get a specific date nailed in year after year, no questions. Um, and uh, yes. Yep. So that, that's, that's the ultimate goal. That's not outside of the realm of possibility, and we hope to make that a reality. Has anybody got any other questions, uh, budget questions that, uh, that may have arised or anything for, uh, for uh, Mr. Tosh? Uh, Kevin, I would say for my part that, um, you know, because the timing of the fair with, with the fiscal year starting July 1st, it's awkward at best. Um, if you are finding yourself that you need to do some things that are on your radar, especially from a logistical or infrastructure perspective, um, and your funds are, are not holding up, please, I mean, I would think this board would want to know that. Um, you know, it's, it's, we are very, you know, what I hear today is, is just unilateral, you know, significant support for the fair in your work. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's our responsibility to make sure that you have the resources that you need to pull off what we're asking you to do. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I hope that's okay. Sure. That, I, that's, I believe that's the consensus of the board. If you need something to pull this event off, I mean, I noticed your first questions on your questionnaire. I've already made my thing, you know, do you want to keep it within the county? And the answer for mine is absolutely. And it does not need to go to an outside because we need to keep this Franklin County, not an outside. That's, yeah, I think a lot of people are shaking their head yes on that. It doesn't need to go out to an outside entity. It needs to stay within the county. Yeah, if you need anything, everybody's shaking their head. Mr. Carter. Yeah, yeah, just one thing about making a permanent date, Kevin. Uh, I think before you, we do that, you need to make sure that it's not conflicting with other ag fair type events and cattle shows because there's a lot of things that go on that time of year so you don't want to get in competition with some of the other events even for vendors mr yeah. carter yeah. when they get booked up for other events yeah yes the, the, so the fair that last year's fair and this year's fair will uh conflict with uh, the warren street historical society and their annual warren street event and i've been in, in talks with uh the, the folks that are organizing that event it may that we can possibly work together that vendors that would be going there on saturday maybe would be at the fair for 
Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and give them an opportunity to attend, you know, the Warren Street Festival on Saturday. But um, but definitely taking a more comprehensive look to make sure. Um, but with options uh, or with uh, additional opportunities come additional options uh, for dates and and things like that. But um, yeah, if there's any other questions or comments about the fair. Yeah. Just one more comment. I think it'd be great ultimately to have a master plan for what the facility look, looked like. Mm -hmm. And so as you did, well, little things like you're adding the hydrants, you realize, oh, they're part of the master plan. In the master plan, I realize I need hydrants here. And well, this year we're doing them. So I think it'd be I, I, not for, to do that right away, but you know, to have that on your list of things to do. So you, you have a plan that you're working towards in the end. Absolutely. And I think the uh, folks from the agricultural development uh, board would, would agree with that. Um, their biggest request uh, in the presentation today would be to get that mission statement and to get those goals um, and ultimately at that September work session, if not sooner, to get some sort of commitment, whether it be a five or ten year commitment to a location uh, especially, but also that the fair uh, would continue in Franklin County. That's another thing that they're going to be striving to look for um, because they're not uh, if they're going to put the time and the money and the effort into to helping us build these facilities and, and these programs, they want to make sure that uh, it's going to have that longevity so that uh, I think the comments today have been appreciated and uh, we'll go forward in, in building that commitment and building that relationship with uh, the agricultural community. Mr. Chairman, may I ask you a question, please? Um, has there been discussion or is there any acknowledgement that we as a board do we need to explore potential alternate locations for the fair here within the county, or or is that a moot point? I don't know what you all have discussed in the past. We haven't. There, there were several years ago. I remember. I say several years ago. There were a few years back when it started the uh, business park. There was talk of maybe moving the fair out there around the. Uh, the farmhouse and all of that but then but then this discussion you may have been on the board by then then the discussion then is that probably wasn't a good idea because we didn't need people kids running in and out where these trucks and uh, all of that was going on and I and I think uh, it ended up as a consensus that uh, there was plenty of room at uh, the park for it and uh, for it to grow and to stay there and then and then there was some talk at one time about potentially going to the Smith farm oh, okay. but then it was the location and it was sort of out of the way or I'm not gonna say out of the way but it was more of uh, harder to get to well we've got deed restrictions there as well and then you got some restrictions there yeah. but uh, you know, I, I think that, uh, for my part, to answer your question, I think of where it's at's a good place, a good place, and uh, centrally located. And there is, uh, I mean, uh, you know, we, we got some room there to to uh, to grow. I already cut down a few trees and uh, uh, went down there and they looked. It wouldn't take a whole lot to put that other building right inside the one that's there. And then the, from what uh, Mr. Mitchell was talking about to add on, when you go out there uh, and look, something that came to my mind a while ago there, Mr. Mitchell, when he was going back, uh, and that, that was that, the high school rodeo, if we could get them uh, to, to hold an event there with just the high school kids, that's what that is. That would be that would be astronomical, and uh, I mean that would be it would be huge. Going back to the mission statement with the uh, uh, education and everything, that would that would be huge there. And uh, last year she's not now because she graduated, but last year my granddaughter was president of the high school radio. I mean it's not beyond the rims to get to get that, at least to get the people there to participate. And uh, yeah, that, that would be, that was a good idea. But that, and if y'all wanna go, if you let me know, 
not this Saturday, but next Saturday. I can arrange it for you. But why are you, don't wear your good shoes while you dirty shoes. <laughs> don't wear your good shoes. <laughs> so that, I'm sorry. Does that, does that answer? That's, that's thank what, you. that's what I remember. That's what I remember in the conversations. Okay, thank you. And the, uh, the other building that was there, gentlemen's back there to the back now, we're talking about the panels. You wouldn't have to put uh, concrete, put the uh, quarry dust in the sand because of the, you know, the animals don't go to the bathroom in, in the bathrooms. They, and so, uh, yeah, that it could be done right there. Uh, the, the facility's there. Kevin, have y'all thought about with all those new hydrants, if y'all have the water capacity to feed it all? Is that all off of one well or what? It is. Um, we, we think we're okay. We've talked about that to make sure we have capacity. And if it's at the, at the current volume, I think, I think it's more of a um, not so much quantity. I think it's more of an accessibility of an issue right now. That's a good question. We thought the same thing. Like, are, are we going to run dry? We have a, I should go by and see it somehow. We have quite the system in the, uh, in, right their office there that's uh, got a huge capacity. So we think we're okay. I was just going to suggest maybe putting in a, uh, a storage tank, like what some cattle producers have to do. You know, 12 o'clock in the middle of the day, cattle drinking more water, so they have a storage. It knocks it down. Well, then at night, the storage will build back up, and that's just a cheap way of doing it. Okay, yeah. No, it might be. It would be unfortunate to have a bunch of livestock down there, and all of a sudden we don't have water. <laughs> yeah, we didn't know what that. Didn't we a big problem. Pond, we? <laughs> That's all right, Ron. Sorry. <laughs> didn't we need that pond money? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need? But they, they, uh, did you not say that? Uh, was it Paul? It said that that when that midway come in there, that they had them bibs, and they had, and they put hooked up eight hoses it, to one to one hydro they do now whether they're all running at the same time or not is hard to tell but and the good thing with the, the livestock is it won't be a constant water source um, that it will probably be around the same amount of water that's used in a traditional fair it's just having the access to it without having to split and um, compete over that water access and it was an astronomical amount of water that they needed for that uh, snow cone machine yeah, it constantly runs water. Mr. Chairman, if we thought about doing a, a, a survey monkey poll of the citizens to see what, what they would like to see at, at, at a fair in Franklin County? I hadn't heard Kevin, have about you that. thought about doing something like that? We have done a small sample of surveys at the fair, mm -hmm. but I think it, if it's the pleasure of the board to do a, a more widespread, that way you would hit the folks who are coming to the fair and the folks that you know, traditionally have not been to the fair, what they would be, if it's the pleasure of the board, we can definitely I'm not trying that. to create work. I'm just, you know, thinking, you know, are we hitting everything we need to hit? And if the citizens, I mean, if we want them to come, mm -hmm. it would be nice to know if we're meeting their expectations. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care. Sounds like a good idea. How much does something like it cost? We can get back to you. I don't I don't think it's going to be a um, it, it won't be a problem I think we have internal resources that will be able to handle that cool any more questions or comments for uh, mr. Tosh thank you Kevin very welcome good presentation thank you y'all yes. need a break or you want to move right into Fox and Ray? keep rolling break or go into Fox and Ray. mr. Paul Chapman, it's your turn, buddy. Yeah, thanks for fitting me in. This is, uh, I'll make sure this is enjoyable and keep you engaged. This is, this is a great thing. This is Parks and Recreation. That's our job, is to um, be the fun department. So yeah, so uh, chair members of the board, yeah, thank you so much for um, the time today I, I love talking about parks and recreation I think there's a lot of good things to share um, that are going on so um, I was going to kind of give an overview and um, keep it casual if there's any questions feel free to interrupt me and I'd be glad to answer anything so I thought I'd start with just some things that just really happened in the last week or two but this really builds into some of our uh, requests and some of our pressures uh, that we're feeling right now so um, 
right now, you all hopefully everyone's heard of River of Lights. It's that's that event we built out of COVID. That we built out of COVID. Uh, essentially, we um, start, we hung up a bunch of Christmas lights over at Wade Park, and it went very. Um, it was very popular. So we're doing it again this year, and we've already sold. This is in June. So we're just doing it just in one month. Fridays and Saturdays in June, about 3,000 tickets available. We've sold nearly half of them already. Crazy busy. But this is, I think, the part that I really like to share with you guys is that on social media, and this is just Facebook, we had 7,000 shares, 18,700 comments. This is actually on Monday, so it's much higher than this now. 28,000, over 28,000 reactions. This is on a bra like over 136,000 engagements. That means people um, clicked on it, liked it, shared it, or they clicked through there and went to like our tourism site and said, gosh, where's a good place I can spend the weekend? It's amazing. And I can't, I was talking to VBR about this earlier today. I can't wait to give you all the numbers about people that are from out of town that have attended this thing. It is, our phones have been ringing off the hook about people that have been traveling a long distance. It's this pleasant surprise that people are coming to this event. And this next number, I'm not making up. It looks like I'm making up, though. There's over a million people this one event has reached. Just really impressive. I, I just think this is just one of those ones that, what, for whatever reason, this just you know, checks all the boxes. So it's a, a great success. Um, this other one, this is one that we've talked about a number of times. I think it was mentioned um, at the last uh, board meeting about youth athletics and you all know all the benefits about youth athletics, about those kids on the court, about sportsmanship, teamwork, you know, physical fitness, all those kind of things. I like this photo because the, the, this player here is out of focus. I'm focusing on the participants. These are people that oftentimes are overlooked. I know you all, you all don't, but it's oftentimes overlooked about what a great community resource this is, what a huge multiplier. There's one kid there, but I bet you there's two parents, two grandparents, there's siblings, and just what a economic driver this is, what a community sense of pride this is, and just the benefits of, um, that are secondary, that they're just harder to track. So here's the number four attendance. And I know this has been mentioned a number of times. Yeah, our, our attendance has just been growing and growing. We're just under 4,000, 3,883, I think is the number right now. And so um, athletics is just getting bigger and bigger. And we're just pleased about that. We had just this past weekend, um, we had the Easter egg hunt, the um, egg hunt festival. We're turning that more into a, a full day festival. And of course the weather lined up too. That was definitely part of it. But um, we had, get this, we had over 4,000 people there. We had, if everyone knows Wade Park, the lower parking lot was full. The, shel the, um, the shelter parking lot was full. Both field, both parking lots of the baseball field were full. People parked all the way up and down the road, all the way up to Pepper Road and down Pepper Road. It was very busy. And the sheriff's office, they had some of their citizens on patrol. They're helping out. And we were all busy. And what a, what a great problem to have. All those parking was a big issue this year. Another recent success. success. This one's coming up. Um, a week from tomorrow, and I know that you all have seen the invite, and hopefully many of y'all are able to come, but um, you, there's lots of community um, actions to start recreational, or there's livability, quality of life programs, rec, um, amenities in their sections of the county, but we have the uh, Lovely Valley Loop Trail ribbon cutting, and there's been a ton of excitement, I'm sure you all have heard about it, about this trail coming in, and this is what I'm calling it, it is definitely, we have some gorgeous, pretty trails throughout the throughout Franklin County. But this one, if you haven't seen it, you need to go check it out. It is, it's just gorgeous. It crosses a couple creeks. There's some cool rock outcroppings, all this running cedar, these mature for uh, mature hardwood forests. It's amazing. So definitely gonna be a huge benefit. So yeah, these, all these good things going on. So these are our pressures, but I'm not, these aren't problems. But you know, we don't, Parks and Recreation, we don't create problems for you guys. These are all good things to have. These are, we don't have bad problems. We have good problems. But yeah, our parks, um, we're seeing kind of we're getting squeezed from both ends. We're seeing heavier use at our parks, and we love that. 
but we're also seeing an increased scope of our, like the Lovely Valley Loop Trail. We're seeing increased scope in our workload too. And we love that, but we're like more people, more projects, we're getting pretty well stretched. So that price staffing is the thing that we are stretched on the, the thinnest. And um, this is just some kind of average, just to, and I share this only to kind of let you all know the expectation in other places is that on average, um, a Parks and Recreation Department sees about 8.3 full-time equivalent staff per 10,000. So that'd be about 46 staff for Franklin County on average. So here we have 19, not 19 full-time staff, there's 16, two part-time, and, and I, I go with all our part-time and one seasonal, that gives about 19 full-time staff equivalent. So if I were you guys, I'd be thinking, well, gosh, Franklin County, we work, we're twice as a Frank County employee versus a, uh, an employee from a, uh, some other county, we're twice as good as they are. But even if you double that up, we're still not, you know, I'd be, what, 48%. We're still not, you know, quite there at average yet. So we're just, we're really um, stretched thin on staff. All right, no, let me ask you a question there. You've seen the new proposals and everything with the new budget and everything. Yes, sir. Does it, that brings it up, is that... This is definitely a step in the right direction. It is great. Yes, what what's proposed is, well, you all will, if those positions weren't funded, I think we'd probably have to reduce some things, um, which I hate to even think about those kind of things. But with this, with this, I think we'll be able to not only maintain what we have, but I think you'll see some, some noticeable improvements. Like, um, we already have tons of ideas. You'll, you'll see um, improvements across the board. So yes, it's we're in a good position. Okay. Yeah, this is current. It's like, I'm, to be honest and totally transparent, I'm trying to give you all ammo and trying to uh, support the budget as of now and what's presented. I think I'm fully in support of what's in there right now. Okay. Yes. Mr. Carter? <laughs> One question. One of those new positions, Paul, is a recreational specialist. What does that entail? So it is, for that's our catch-all term. We have that term that, that captured everybody at that pay grade, but it's really gonna be for our athletics. And um, I have some metrics in here later on. I'll kind of circle back around to it, but I'll, I'll, I'll jump ahead to it. We're really, we're pressed hardest on, um, we have, I'll, do you know what, I'll get to that here in just a second. I think it's, it's really to help out with our coaching staff because we have so many coaches and they're such a resource. And if we don't maintain it, we're gonna end up losing it. I think that might be, yeah, actually, perfect timing, Mr. Carter. So, yeah, record high attendance or athletics. This current fiscal year, we have 745 volunteer coaching positions. That's, you know, that's up. You know, our numbers are going up. We have more kids. That's a great thing, but we need, it takes more and more coaches. Last year, we had 622, which was much higher, 745. So we do some estimates per sport and that kind of thing. So that's 41,000 hours of volunteer service, that's $1.3 million in value. So Mr. Carter, that position that you're asking about, this recreation specialist, it'll be for our athletic department, and it's really there to recruit volunteer coaches, retain them, train them, and, and make sure our program continue, continues to be strong. Because it's, as you all know, volunteerism, it's just harder and harder to get volunteers. And it is harder and harder for us. We, we don't want to turn kids away. We want, we want to always have a team for everybody. So this will ensure that happens. Thank you, Mr. Carter, if I may, Mr. Chairman. I had the same question Mr. Carter had. Um, and thank you for your answer. I just, to tag on to that, um, does this position also work on the scheduling aspect of all of these league um, events? They would probably be a backup and an overlap person, but they generally, this position probably would not oversee the scheduling. So um, is it just um, to make sure that volunteers are recruited and retained? That would be their main thing. Yet, here's some, here's some other things that I'm hoping to have them bleed into, um, but it's, that's gonna be their main focus for sure. Um, I'm hoping they can work with also with like um, sportsmanship, coaching. That's one of the things I think we're, um, it's so often one of the biggest challenges is like about with, <laughs> I try to put this nicely, one of, the, one of the biggest things is usually about parents and spectators, that kind of thing. And so hopefully this will be, there also be the element of training spec, parent spectators on how to properly cheer on their parent, their, their teammates, how to be supportive 
and those kind of things. So that, that'd be another aspect of it. Hoping to, I've got tons of different ideas for this position with the perfect candidate. I Thank go you, on Bob. Yeah. Thank you. So will they have a gun? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was one of those parents back in the day. Yeah. I was an excitable mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, another pressure, aging services. Um, I just feel like I should mention this as well. Uh, if you go over the Essex Center, the place is always busy. It's active. Um, you know, we've talked about that whole silver tsunami that's, that's me coming. Well, it's here. And really, we're seeing more and more seniors that aren't wanting to stay home and watch Wheel of Fortune. They're wanting to get out and about and engage with their, um, with their community. And so we're seeing like record attendance also at the Essex Center. I pulled up our attendance numbers just through this year. And um, even this year, it's, we have, we've had over 32,000 uh, people this fiscal year, which was a 29% increase from last year. And you know, it, it, gosh, you all are talking about with, with the fair. You know, we are kind of like your, um, we, we produce a lot of the product. We're the backbone to, or the, the weight to um, making, making these events happen. You know, the Ag Fair, the River Lights, Concerts by Canoe, um, Land of Lights, all these things. We love doing that. Um, How did that Land of Lights go this year? Oh, uh, yeah, it went great. We had a few, if you remember, it, pretty much every weekend was rainy this past year. Right. So our attendance was, I think, just a little bit down from last year, but it was still busy and popular, and people loved it. It was, yeah, yeah, cool. huge success. We had tons of, yeah, a big outpouring, people, people, all good things. Um, sports marketing, gosh, I see more and more of a need for that. There's, we're on a, conference call with VBR. We're hoping to, um, we have a site visit on April 30th with, for another mountain bike race. We hope that's fruitful, but it you know takes some staff to put those events on and we want to make those things happen. I guess too, I, I thought about this being a, another good pressure and that we oftentimes talk about like the lodging and meals taxes, but all these things really, this is the thing that gets me most excited is about like this community pride. People love it when there's a great ag fair and they're talking to their friends and family about the blue ribbon that they won or at the Land of Lights and that they went through there and did you see that they're, they're talking about the new exhibit that went up. It's just, there's community pride and being proud to say that you're from Franklin County. Yeah, so those three positions that are in the budget right now are um, for a park maintenance worker, one that is another maintenance worker, but really to help us out with our outdoor assets. And that last one is, um, we mentioned earlier, was youth athletics. Um, so yeah, that's parks and recreation in a, in a nutshell about some of our pressures. I just kind of touched base on our two operational um, requests there. I'd be glad to answer any questions that you all might have about our proposed budget. Mr. Carter. Yeah, just, just a quick question, Paul. I was curious about that social media response to River of Lights. Do you all do that as a sponsored ad, or how did you get that kind of response? That is a good question. We do. We do pay um, for many of our programs. We do the, you can pay a couple dollars and, and have them boosted, and we do that. We, for some reason, the algorithm loves that event. And I, I think we're all kind of scratching. I'm looking at Kevin a little bit. I think we're all scratching our head. Why is it a great event? Does it, I'm not quite sure. I wish I knew the answer because I'd have that for all of our programs. Huge, that's a huge amount of numbers for a social media post. I was, I was just curious how you achieved that. Uh, I wish I knew. I would, I, I'm impressed and excited about it, but I, if I could, I wish we did for all of our programs, but. Oh. Yeah, Mike, this one you yeah. said that because I was looking on Facebook the other day and a friend of mine that doesn't live anywhere around here shared the post about that was talking about how they were going to go to it and I was like, what in the world are they worried about going to? <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> but I, so it's just, it's funny that I saw that the other day and then it's mentioned here. Yeah. Yeah, when I was in business and we would do those sponsored ads, if we got 4,000 hits or something, that was huge. So that, I mean, that's, that's amazing numbers. Yeah, I, I'd like to, I think for some reason the Facebook algorithm likes it, but I think this thing is really, truly unique. I don't think there's anything like it around. I guess I don't want to underplay the unique thing about this. I mean, it, it kind of hits all the 
uh, everything that's great about Franklin County. It's our waterways. It's 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 um it's tubing. It's you know it's a very you know rural thing to do. It's and it's pretty. It's I don't know anybody else that does this program. So, Paul, what time is the ribbon cutting again at the Smith Farm? I, I believe I have it here on uh, twelve. The next slide. It's a, it's a, it's at noon. Yes, sir. Okay. Sure I have the right time. Yeah, here it is. Get that. Twelve o'clock. Yeah, I've been hearing lots of um, buzz about that. I think there'll be a, a good turnout for that ribbon cutting. Any more questions or comments, Mr. Carter? That just brings up another, just a comment. I was down that way recently, and that house there on the Smith Farm is looking pretty sad. Uh, there's a lot of vines growing on it. Uh, we, we need to maybe take a look at cleaning that place up a little bit because a lot of people go by there on the way to the 4-H center and it, it it looks sort of bad it's right there on the side of the road and there's a lot of uh, I don't remember if it was machinery or hay rolls or something sort of piled up around it uh, we need to clean that up a little bit I'll, I'll make note that we this past year we went there and did some landscaping around there we sent some of our park staff out there to clips in those vines and that kind of thing, but it, it could use a little bit, another facelift, yeah. Mr. Quinn. I would, I, it's interesting to hear about all of the uh, people that you're getting to come, you know, the attendance records and all. And it's, um, I think about some of the things I've posted with different events and, and I always am getting the comment, oh, I didn't know about this. And, you know, and so it's, it's making me ponder, how do you better promote things? And it doesn't seem like you need to do that, but, but based on the response I get for different events, uh, people are wondering, like, how do I learn about this stuff? Because they're learning about it at the last minute. So I, I, it's not, I'm just, it's just a thought uh, for you. It is, it is often puzzling, like, how do you not know about this event? This is a you know, key event or you know, whatever. I'm not sure which one you're talking about, but I, I've heard that a number of times. I, I hear that, uh, I was just talking to somebody yesterday about the Essex Center. They just learned about the Essex Center. How, how are you just now hearing about this? Um, you know, we have a, a kind of a small marketing budget, and we, we try to do the best we can like with the, the playbook and social media, you know, banners. It's kind of the shotgun approach, but... Um, it's called yeah. a PIO. I know. <laughs> yeah. We need a PIO. And so with uh, Reba had the dog park fundraiser last oh, weekend, and, yeah. and I just posted it kind of at the last minute, but I had a number of people that came in and say, well, how's, how, how could I have learned about this? I just learned about it now. It's too late. It was sold out two weeks ago, but it, it, that's just an example of an event I'm saying that I posted that people were wondering, how do they learn about it? Yeah. That's it. Anyone else? Any more questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good thank presentation. You, All right, we'll take a uh, thank you for your interest. All right, now, before we adjourn, we've got a couple of things we need to discuss. Uh, <clears throat> talk to Mr. Whitlow, well, even as early as today. Uh, we, we, uh, we got the public hearing coming up on Monday. And it's to hear what the citizens say, how they feel about the tax rates that have been proposed. We do not have to make a decision on that and give them an answer on Monday, staff. But we will have to by the 16th. That's the latest that we can procrastinate because the tickets have to be, the, has to be written up uh, Ms. Torrance, commissioner, has to get those papers and they have to be sent out. So we have to do that. Now, we can talk about how we feel about the budget that has been presented to us, Mr. Whitlow, in staff's budget a little bit tonight. Uh, now, there's time, and, and, and we can allot that time in the, uh, for the agenda on the 16th that we can discuss it, but a decision has to be made on the 16th. That's the latest that we could do. Now, the budget doesn't have to be done at that time. We've got another month or six weeks on the budget before that can be done, but the tax rate has to be, we have to vote on it on the 16th. Now, 
we can wait until then to do that or if and don't throw nothing at me i'm just telling you our options if it's another workshop that we've got to do between now and then uh you've got to have how long to announce for the Three. announce for a, a workshop and it's seven days isn't it it's three days Huh? It's three, three, three business days. Three business days, okay. So if we have to do another workshop to do that, but uh, I'm just putting you, telling you the options are out there and how do you feel. I know that each one of you's probably got thoughts in your mind on where you'd like to see the, uh, the tax rate set. Uh, Mr. Whitlow and staff has told us that uh, it's pretty bare bare minimum I didn't bring those papers with me but it was like it was balanced on like 30 some per, uh, point 30 some percent there of the revenue uh, and we're getting close to where we're gonna have to start cutting uh, uh, services if it gets down to that and how much that is so uh, you know the options that are out there you read these books just like I do you got your own thoughts on where you want to see the tax rate uh, if it's the flat at 41 or go up as high as 45 we cannot go no higher than that so I'm gonna open it up the floor up now you heard heard that and each one of you's got your own thoughts I'm sure and I would like to hear from you on uh, on how you want to do it if you think that uh, with the information you got and what you have in your mind I'm not going to ask you that today I think that's unfair to everybody to ask where you think it needs to go but it's going to be up to us if we go less to tell staff where we're going to have to make cuts and where we're going to have to come up with the money so uh, i'll start with uh mr Taylor. all right thank you mr chairman first of all i want to commend chris and staff on the proposed budget i think that it was very well thought out and very well uh, organized and, and done and for me i if we took a vote right now, I could, with clear conscience, vote for the budget as proposed with the 45 cent tax rate. However, um, I would like to see if we can make it work without uh, cuts into county services. If we could go lower, lower is, would be better. And the range that I'm at is between 45 and 43. Um, I would like, you know, if we can look at whether it's the school, um, you know, they told us that they're saving $2 million by closing two schools. Why not let the citizens of the county enjoy that $2 million savings? And uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. Ms. Smith, we'll go to you. let's go down this way first. Can I, defer, can I defer for a moment? Sure. Quinn. So... Really, my comments are the same that I made back on March 5th, and that's that the non-school portion of the budget has gone up 17% or $13 million. And for me, that I can't defend that kind of increase to the constituents, that a year-over-year -year increase of 17% with the non-school portion of the budget. Uh, on the school portion, I mentioned... Uh, Previously, I think the schools made a tough decision this year to close the school, two of the schools. I'm, I'm uh, very supportive of trying to complete that phase two compensation study to get the teachers back, uh, well, another third of the way towards the right step. And I'm fearful that if you cut the school budget at all, that we would lose that ability to implement their phase two. So I'll start, stop there. Thanks. Mr. Carter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm torn about this year's tax rate because representing the town of Rocky Mount, some close to 5,000 souls, um, I think the, the town is going to hold their 13 cent per hundred tax rate, which is going to put an undue burden on, on a lot of my constituents if I vote for the full 45 cents. Uh, as far as the school budget, I think there's, it could be cut. My concern is we have no control over the money once it's spent. And I agree with what Dan said. I would like to see them be able to do the phase two compensation study, but 
my fear is if we cut their budget, they're, they're going to cut the teacher pay. They're not going to take it from anywhere else. Uh, and, and that's sort of where I'm at. I, I'm really uh, torn and undecided. I, I think I want to wait till the public hearing and I want to hear what the general public has to say. And I know like the rest of you, all I go to the grocery store and you spend 40 or 50 bucks and you got two bags of stuff. AEP, the electric rates are through the roof. It's, it's ridiculous. And the, the people that uh, struggle typically are really struggling now and to burden them with a massive tax increase I, I, I'm not going to be able to do that I'm sorry Mr. Mitchell whether it's schools fire trucks county administration sheriff's <coughs> office public safety parks and rec it all comes at a, at a price and um, I'm with what Dan said uh, 17 percent is a lot of growth it's, and we have to consider the the money we've already gotten on personal property over the last few years um, I'm at 43 cent uh, cuts aren't easy to make um, but they can be done Mr. Jones. I would like to see it cut and Chris y'all done a great job don't get me wrong, everything's there. But hearing from the citizens we've been hearing from and getting calls from now, uh, I think we owe it to them to do what we can to cut it down. So the biggest thing to look at, I think, is like everybody else said, is the school. And what you said, Mike, is true. If we, we, hold, we cut their budget, they're going to probably go back to their uh, comp study and to pay it to the teachers. But I look at it this, this if they do that, that pretty much shows where their priorities are. I mean, so I'm sure there's everything, other things that they can look at in their budget and cut. We had um, last year, uh, they didn't, we had the same budget to them as we did this year, proposed budget. They had a 1.2 million overage. And with the cuts they've made and adjustments they've made, I would have a hard time thinking why we need it this year. So I'm looking at, I'm. I'd like to see it somewhere around four, four to three. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I think that um, without question, um, my thinking lies very much with my colleagues, which, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see that we're all kind of of like mind <clears throat> within a, you know, a cent or two of, of the rate. Um, I would be happy uh, with 43 cents. 44 would be optimal for me because my fear is the lower we go, we are going to have to raise taxes again in, in, in a few years ahead of, that, that are ahead of us. So I fear taking the rate too low. Um, but our citizens are hurting. And um, constituents across this county, <clears throat> including my district, you know, they're hurting. These assessments are just a bubble and they have been very detrimental to everybody in this county. So I feel a responsibility um, to mitigate <clears throat> that, that terrible burden that's been placed due to the reassessments um, while we're trying to uh, protect county services. And I think that's the inherent balance that we're charged with as elected officials. So um, bottom line for me, um, I, I'm sitting between 43 and 44 cents. And it would depend uh, for me upon where um, those reductions would be suggested um, by the board working with with uh, county administration <clears throat> well for my part I'm going to say basically everything that echo what everybody else is saying I have uh, no qualms about going to 44 cent I can talk in can be talked into 43 cent pretty easy uh, I think that uh, the savings can be uh, I think the school board has, has has done well in what they've done with the closing of the two schools and trying to save money, but I still have some heartburn when every time they say something, they say teachers, teachers, teachers. And if you'll remember the chart that we've got, uh, and I did not bring mine with me, but it was like the top three numbers were like the teachers, the L, LECP or something to that effect, and it showed their pre, pre, pay scale and then it was G1 through G15 and that was the uh, 
cafeteria workers, bus drivers, people in the garage, you know, support th those those types of supports. They have no no problem at all with their proposed three percent raise. And then from uh, 15 up or down, the administrators, you know, I, I think a 1% raise is there. But to math, the numbers are going to be about the same because of the money that they're making. And then I think, uh, you know, we've really done well uh, with the equipment that we bought, uh, fire trucks and, and buying those uh, ammo lamps to be uh, uh, refurbished and, and all of that. Uh, I think there's... Uh, if we've got a cut, you know, we, we we got to pick and choose and do it properly. I do not want to see uh, when Mr. Whitlow was telling us before, and I, and I have to commend him and staff for the work that they put and the time that they put into it because I know a lot of times they were burning the midnight oil and we're giving them more work right now and what we're telling them, but we're getting my, a head start on what's coming. Uh, I don't want to see services cut where an, an office is closed to four days, and then our people are losing a day's pay, uh, that's, not, that's not right. You know, we've gotten to a point now, you know, we kicked this can down the road, then we done that market study. In the last couple of years, we bought it up. I don't want to see us go backwards. I want to see us to continue to go forward. So I think that, uh, I know that's, that's putting some more there, but uh, I think you're getting a, uh, an idea of where the board feels like we need to go or we're looking at. I do not think, now here, here's another question that I'm presenting to the board for where we're at. We do not have to make a decision Monday night after the hearing. I mean, we can if we want to, but we do not have to. But by the 16th, our next meeting, we do have to. Now, with that being said, we can make the agenda light on the 16th so that we can have plenty of time to talk and, and make some decisions if we have to be specific on where cuts are to be made. Or if you want to have a work session, another work session between now and the 16th. I'm going to open that up to the board and uh, uh, you guys tell us. I think everybody has made their, I think everybody has made their, uh, what they, they had to say to, to be said. Now, keep in mind, if we have another work session at Mr. Jamison, he asked us to do this on the 8th because he has plans all next week. I'll be back with the 16th, though. If we, sir? I'll be, I would be here for the 16th meeting. You'll be here for the meeting on the 16th? Yes, sir. But from the 9th on, you're gone? I'm gone till the following Sunday. So we have to keep that in mind. So he will be gone. Why don't we plan for a light? agenda like you said on the 16th and then if we need the time for discussion whatever we can mr chairman i would ask staff uh mr willow how would that affect y'all if i mean would it we, we can we can make that work uh mr jamison um members of the board we can we can make that work you have given us some parameters here and i think we can um we we, we can gives us some time to look at some things between now and the 16th and I think have a meaningful discussion and, and w with the board. How about the rest of you? I'm fine with the 16th making the light agenda. One thing from a, a process point of view, Ronnie, I'm just thinking you could figure out at what point you have four votes. I'm, uh, maybe I'm oversimplifying, but say at 44 you have four votes. Well, that's, that's a rate that is agreeable to the majority of the board. It seems like you could get to that uh, even next Monday. I'd be for handling it next Monday, too. I think everybody already knows where they're at. That's two for next Monday to, to do that. So. I'm all right with that. I mean, like I said, either, either day is fine with me. Me too. Mm -hmm. Monday, if y'all want to vote Monday, I'm fine with that. Staff will make, you know, whatever works, you know. As long, well, as, long as Chris says staff's ready, I'm the, um, It uh, certainly helps, you know, the, the sooner we can give the rate to the commissioner and the treasurer, you know, the more they have time they have to process everything. Mm -hmm. So 
And sounds then, like sounds like there's a consensus that we're going to take a vote on it Monday. So if we if you got questions or something, uh, you're gonna have to get them to staff uh, before Monday. So it sounds like then after the meeting on Monday, uh, that's gonna give that's gonna give us some homework between now and then because I know I know each and every one of you are compassionate about this as I am and gonna have to go back and study because I'm I'm serious and and I know y'all are too. I do not want to see I do not want to see an office closed and staff member lose a day's pay. Mm -hmm. I do not want to see that. Uh, I, I, that that that's just not acceptable. And I, but but <clears throat> we if, if if everybody I mean I I know right now what you were talking about a while ago. I know you would get four on forty four. I think it's I think everybody would be on the forty four cent. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm not so sure that you can't get four for forty three. But uh, but I know that I know that's there. That can be said. Period. Uh, right out off the right off the bat on that. Mr. To answer to answer your question, Mr. Quinn. Mr. So, Chairman, I yes. just if I may. Sure. <clears throat> just no, if you got, I want everybody. If you got something to say, say it. Just anecdotally, um, in terms of the gravity of, of this decision, I, this this is keeping me up at night, uh, and it has been since we got our budget book. Because um, I, I know and I've seen, you know, our citizens are struggling. They and are. I know that we're not the only source of struggles. We all, you know, have those AEP increased bills and groceries and all. Um, but yet we're taxed with, you know, no pun intended, of course, to run the county. And um, I just, you know, when, when I start thinking about increases, tax increases, when I look at things like CSA costing us a million more dollars in the upcoming budget, a million more dollars that we didn't have to do last year, and when I look at a $600,000 requirement of new money for the regional jail, when I look at when we get faced here in a year or two with SROs going to require another new million plus dollars perhaps, if the uh, state doesn't do something um, and the other mandates unfunded mandates that are going to be coming there's no question about that um, when i think about just the nature of the types of increases that we see in our budget book <clears throat> that we literally have no control over landfill the closure of the landfill cell um, and all the requirements that go with that um, and opening a new cell and just things that aren't readily visible and seen by the general public when it comes to where their tax dollars are going, because I have to answer that question a lot. You know, where are my tax dollars going? I don't, I don't see we're getting anything. And, and I, I can explain that. My problem is, is that these reassessments, I'm not hearing so much from my constituents about the tax rate, it's about the reassessment process. The reassessment process has become the root of all evil uh, right now. And, um, and I don't disagree with that. And so, you know, I work real hard to try to set a distinction between the tax rate and the reassessments, but at the end of the day, they, they intersect and the rate is gonna drive how much taxes, of course, our folks are paying. And, um, I don't know, it is so difficult to sit up here and look at these types of increases that we have no choice but to deal with and know we're gonna need money to do it because we've kicked the can down the road now for a couple decades and we're there, our backs are against the wall. It is the hardest thing in the world to try to tell our citizens um, in order to keep their services in place. I feel like we we have tightened down since I've been on the board. We've tightened down each and every year, to the point that we balanced our budget last year with interest income. That is not a place for a locality to live, in a fiscally conservative uh, budget, even even at that rate. So I just wanted to share some of those thoughts with you because they're the internal struggles 
that I have in trying to balance the care and the welfare of our citizens, the services we need to deliver. Um, and we are, I, can, I, I brag about this board all the time, we are very um, conscientious about being cost efficient. And I think our staff knows that. And we try to get the biggest bang for the buck. But these reassessments have been a bubble and they've driven us into an environment that is unfair to our citizens. It's unfair to us with the decisions we have to make. So we've got to find a sweet spot, if you will, and make a decision that tries to take some, put some and inject some support in both arenas. And I just wanted to share my personal thoughts with you about that because that really it, it is really kind of capturing the struggle that I'm going through in trying to set a tax rate. Anyone else? The only thing that I would add to what uh, Ms. Smith said is uh, I feel like all of our feelings are probably along those lines uh, from the phone calls that I've gotten from you all and from the citizens. And one of the things that uh, in the past that our budget has been balanced on a whole lot is the federal monies that we've been getting from grants and everything from the COVID epidemic. We've lost that after this year. Mm -hmm. It's gone. So that's another thing that, that we're having to deal with. And then as it was alluded to by a couple of the members earlier, the SROs that are coming up, they're every one of those 15 positions are on the grants. And they, they're going to start, uh, well, one of them's already run out. And, you know, the schools and the town and the county has picked them up already. So all of that, all of that's coming up too. So in uh, the only thing that I can e echo other, you know, was talking about uh, AEP, but uh, my insurance went up uh, on my real estate and on my vehicles. Everybody's shaking their head, theirs mm -hmm. did too. So, so we're getting hit all the way around with everything. And <clears throat> the folks, the citizens, and I know a lot of them do it, it's affecting this board as well. I mean, we, we, we live in the same world everybody else lives in. So, yeah, it's, it's difficult times. And, and I too have <coughs> stayed up at night thinking about this thing and going on and getting the books and, and looking through them and just reading the same numbers over and over. They don't change. Every time you read them, it's the same numbers. So, Mr. Chairman, so I, 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 I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. So, anything that that's that's the reality of where we're at today, that uh, uh, we're in a in a in a place in our world today that we've never been before, because our world's never been here, and the world we used to live in and grew up in, it's not coming back. It's not here. So, that's that's. Pretty much all I gotta say, Ms. Smith. You had something yeah, else. Yeah, I, I had asked um, at one of our past recent meetings to try to quantify what dollar amount would be if we reduce the personal property tax by six cents, down to down to two dollars and thirty-five cents, which equates to Bedford's rate. Given the increase we saw last year, did we ever get a number on that, Mr. Whitlow? We did it um, for each penny. It's about eighty thousand. So um, the math, it's about almost half a million, four hundred eighty thousand, half a million. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So the value increase of a penny uh, now is still around a million dollars. Yes, sir. Tax well, increase about, about a million, million two, mil, million one. I think was the reassess approximately. Hey, yeah, about a million, a million fifty thousand, so yeah. estimated. That's a penny tax increase. <clears throat> All right, is that anything else to anyone? Has everybody got a clear conscience? All right, then the uh, we will be adjourned until April the eighth. That's this coming Monday at six o'clock.